Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You've been to this website before, you know we're huge Viper fans here, going all the way back to 92 when I got my first one. Uh, as you can see, there's three new Vipers here. A while back, we previewed the new Viper here on the website, but we didn't get to drive it because it wasn't street legal yet. Well, these two are street legal. In fact, that one just got driven all the way across country to our garage. Let's re meet Ralph Giles Zaman and Ralph, how you doing? Hi, Jay. Ralph is, and I see, VP of Design and head of RT, uh, SRT. SRT, yes. SRT, very yeah. good. Now, he is the ultimate car guy. In the old day, the kind of fat accountant sitting there <laughs> arguing that this brakes are too expensive. Those, those are all gone. We got car guys running the company now. In fact, Ralph drove that Viper from Florida to here pretty much not. How long did it take you? Three days? Four, just under four days. Just yeah. under four days. You yeah. did 910 miles yesterday in it. Yes. Okay. Through a well, blizzard. <laughs> yeah, through a blizzard. Well, that's, see, that's fantastic. That's what being a car guy is all about. Uh, let's go over it quickly. V10, 640 horsepower. Yep. Yeah, it's 600 pounds of torque, uh, all aluminum. Engine's about 25 pounds lighter. Has uh, variable valve timing now. Uh, plastic intake manifold. Uh, a lot of torque, but it's really a rever now. The actually engine loves Redline. Yeah, what is the Redline? Uh, Redline is 6400, I believe. 6400, yeah. very good. So tell us about the car. Well, the Kano Vipers had this kind of, you know, axe murderer type of personality. You know, everyone's <laughs> afraid of the car for some reason. Yeah. So we tried to make the car a little more accessible and, and keep that visceral part of the car. Right, right. As you know, that's part of the magic of the car. It's a little bit of a, something you work your way up to. So the car's um, dynamically, it's, it's a little more accessible. The track is wider. The rear suspension's a little more settled down. Um, fantastic steering. We actually stiffened the whole body with this beautiful X brace we call Spidey. Right. Nicknamed Spidey because it looks like a spider. And that has just transformed the steering. It's, it's almost telepathic now the way it steers. So that's the beginning of it. The uh, shifting is quicker, but I think personally as a designer, it's about the body. It is a beautiful car. I mean, yeah. you can still see the Viper heritage in it, yeah. but it's a bit more... Uh, Voluptuous. Dare I say Sexy. Italian, sort of, <laughs> almost Italian-y. It yeah. looks like, I mean, I always like the curve mm -hmm. of the Viper. Yeah. as opposed to some of the more angular and cars. That's a now. compliment to me. A lot of people thought the Italians actually designed it because, you know, Fiat is now our parent, right. parent company, but they were all, it was all done in the U.S. Uh, but I'm a big fan of the original Ferrari GTOs, things right. like that, so I, I like those shapes that are timeless. And your head is sitting only a foot ahead of the rear wheel. Right. So all you see is hood. It seems to go on forever, so it gives you a perception of, of a very large car, but it really isn't. Yeah, um, and that, that's yeah. what's kind of fun, because to me, the Porsche 911 was always my benchmark. I don't want a car bigger than that. Yeah. You know, I hate a car that's wider than the road yeah. or, or, or more is over the double line. And that's, that's what's kind of fun that this is, uh, this is that small. What does the car weigh? The car right now, the lightest version of the car, the L1 over there weighs uh, 3,297 pounds. Really? Yeah, we've, we've taken about 100 pounds, 150 pounds off the car right. if you take the track pack package. Uh, the GTS is roughly 100 pounds lighter than the outgoing model. A lot of that is the bodywork, uh, the hood, uh, deck lid and uh, roof are all carbon fiber now. And I take you know. 200 pounds out of the car every time I get out of it. So <laughs> right there. That's right, you have a lot of carbon fiber now, right? Yeah, the okay. first time we've ever used so much of it. We've done it in our race cars, but never in our production car. Right, and right. the hood, I believe, is the largest production uh, single piece of carbon fiber today. Yeah, this is what I'm car. told. When I, uh, when I got my first Viper in 92, yeah. I was told this was the single most expensive American car part you could buy, yeah. body part. About 11,000 a piece. Yeah. Is that what they are, 11,000? <laughs> yeah, or more now, as the car ages, or even more than that. Oh, wow. Don't break yours. No, no, <laughs> don't break it. No, mine never broke. Mine, yeah. is, mine has been great. I've had my, God, I've had my Vipers 20 years. That's yeah. amazing. And I love the fact that it's evolutionary. Well, you have it, two. Yeah, yeah, I do you have, have a GTS, two. right? So, well, so. you know, I got, the, I got the convertible, and I loved it, but I couldn't park it anywhere because you couldn't lock it up. And when the GTS came out, and... Oh my God, air conditioning. <laughs> Power windows. Power windows. <laughs> Look <What>? out. <laughs> Suddenly it's 1958. Power so, windows. So Jay, I have yeah. a confession. Yeah. I've added cruise control. Oh, you have added cruise control. You know what? And, and we, we debated it. It was a very painful thing because we were all raw and, you know, back to basics. But I had that thing locked in cruise control for yeah. 3,000 miles. I mean, it I have to admit, I've really never used nice. cruise control in any yeah. car I have because yeah. maybe because I don't, I don't, I'm not driving seven, eight hours. Plus, you've also got uh, ABS and uh, stability control, but yeah. that's the law now. Isn't yeah, it, it was yeah. mandated in 2012 last year. Right. Every car made has to have it. But this is a very open system. Uh, if you're a good driver, you'll probably never feel it. You yeah, know, and if you're a, a bad driver, it'll, it'll save you from the flatbed. And you can uh, you can shut it off if you want. Yeah. yeah, the GTS, matter of fact, has four modes. So okay. as you get better with the car, you can go deeper into oblivion. Okay, because I know a lot of the to. German cars, you can't <laughs> totally turn off the... Germans don't give up power easily. So they, they, <laughs> you, can't, uh, you can't turn off the... You know, funny story, you know, when Mercedes and Chrysler were together, we had to show them what a burnout was. 
And the only way you can do it was to shut up. They said, why would you ever want to do that? So <laughs> when we Why would you want to do burnout? <laughs> There's no cause for burnout. Why would you want cup holder when driving? You know, yeah, it was very funny. That was a huge deal, I remember, yeah. with Mercedes-Benz. A, a, a cup holder, why would you have a <laughs> beverage in the car while you're driving? That is wasteful. Yeah. So you can cut back to the last time we, yeah. we did a burnout uh, tutorial at your show, if you remember that. That's right. That, oh, that's right. That's right. Apparently, my burnout was too wimpy. <laughs> he wants to show the proper way to do the burnout with the automatic 374 is Hemi, 374 is horsepower Hemi. Okay, here we go. All right, Ralph. Yeah, we put a defeatable trash control, so we gotta switch yeah. that off and okay. uh, bow towards the north and all this stuff. Right, okay, <laughs> let's see, work. here we go. <laughs> let's see how he does. <laughs> Oh, the kid's good. I guess when you build them and design them, you know how to do the proper burnout. What were you doing that I wasn't doing? Just a little more throttle. A little more throttle, that's what it was. A little more throttle. <laughs> that's right, you did but show me. The, the other thing I'm really proud of, of is the interior. Yeah. Mean, we have a young designer called Tomei, uh, and actually Scott Kruger did the exterior, and he is a big fan of European interiors, and, and you could see it. I mean, the interior is very, I think it's well thought out. Still driver-oriented, very cockpit-like. We've actually pushed all the surfaces away. It gives the impression of more space when you sit there. Let's take a look. Yeah. I'm a big fan of this sort of stitching like this. Isn't that cool? This is really yeah, nice. yeah, that really looks good because it makes sense when you're sitting in the car. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say a dashboard is like, uh, it, it's like a pretty woman. You're sitting across it from the breakfast table every morning, <laughs> and that's what you're looking at. Yeah, yeah, you, you live know? there. So you want to see if it's a pretty face. You know, oh, yeah. it makes you feel good. You yeah. know, and that hasn't been our strength, and we've been really focused on that yeah. in the last five years. And I think the Viper really is our best work. I mean, it really is. It's all Swedish leather, Swedish and Italian, tanned in Italy. Yeah. Uh, the cows get massaged and then rubbed. The cows get massaged <laughs> and then rubbed. I didn't want to go there. <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, can we open the hood? Yeah, let's do it. And I'm so proud we brought back the clamshell hood. So yeah. for a while, for the. Uh, the Gen 4 had a regular alligator okay. type hood. And look at this massive X brace here. And actually, it comes out quite easily, doesn't it? If you need yeah, to get for to service, it. yeah. For service, that's pretty neat. Very cool. Yeah, it comes straight from our racing experience. We've been racing about 14 years in various road racing, and that was a big benefit. So we said, why not put it on the streetcar? Yeah. yeah. Hey, I want to show you a picture of my, uh, when I first got my Viper back in uh, 92. We went, we went over to see Carl Shelby. It's the first time I met him. That was actually in early 91. Look, I have black hair. Look at that. That denim is very durable, Jay. <laughs> Look, I'm wearing the same clothes 20 years ago that I have on now. That's, that's, that's correct. Well, I want to show you a picture of me when I got my first Viper. Dick Winkles. Now, he's been in the team, what, since the beginning? Yeah, the only yeah, guy. Come on in. Come on years. in here. How are you? Good. Look, he looks exactly the same. Yeah, I'm a lot heavier. Yeah, yeah. Wait, here's <laughs> our picture. Look, well. look, and he's got the beard, very kind of early '90s yeah, little, little kind of hip thing. Yeah. You've been involved with the Viper project since the beginning. Just about you? day one, yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Yep. And uh, and as he was saying before, it's not and never was a truck engine, correct? Never was a truck engine. Never, never was, was a truck engine. No truck Thank engine. you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a pretty outrageous motor in the in, in the day back in because. You know, you have to go back to the late 80s, early 90s. The most powerful thing you could buy in America, I think, was the Corvette with 350 horsepower. Is that about well, actually, right? Actually, yeah, I think you're right. Well, the ZR1 came out in what, 91 or 2? Or yeah, but that was, was that, yeah, that was a higher yeah. price. But yeah. your base Corvette, 350 was about the most horsepower. Yeah. When the Viper came out with 400, it was like, oh, my God, it's like the end of the world. Yeah. <laughs> 400 yeah. barely gets you in the supercar club anymore. And that was a tough job back then, and yeah. here we are at 640 already. And of course, the V10, and it was meant to recreate sort of the feel and the visceral appeal of the, the early Cobra. That's when Lutz right. was running the yeah. whole deal. That's right. And of course, this is what it evolved to, very European styling, but with American uh, underpinnings. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a great, great car. Uh, how have you seen the engine change over the last 20 years? Well, the engine's kind of like me, Jay. Uh, we both age gracefully. Right, and right. We've gotten much better with age. So right. It's gone from the 8 liter to the 8.4, and as I said before, it went from 400 horse to 640 now. Right. So 60% more power out of the same basic architecture. It's pretty amazing. All right, let's get back to this now. As I remember, uh, the aluminum V10 was originally developed by Lamborghini? Yeah, it correct? was It was based off our V8s at the time, but we had no knowledge of aluminum castings at right, the time. Right. So he was actually working with Lamborghini. We owned Lamborghini for a short right, time. Right, Chrysler right. owned Lamborghini. So uh, Dick spent a lot of time in Italy. Um, so 
uh, that's where LV10 came from, this idea of putting a big bore uh, V10 engine. Back in that yeah. day, back, uh, I think, uh, Lee Iacocca bought Lamborghini for $6 million. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow, look at the company now. So that's a pretty smart move. Very cool. Now Fun. tell me about this. This looks a little different. Yeah, so this is a striping. Um, our owners, our last generation car, we would paint the stripes on top of the, of the paint, even right. the clear. So now what we do is we actually paint the stripes first, then the body color, and then clear over. So oh, very, I see. So you don't feel that ridge. Yes. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, and then every car gets uh, uh, color rubbed, or you know, so it's there's right. no you can see there's no orange peel of any kind on all the. And I love the uh, diapers, the bubble. Yes, and this is all function. You know, every SRT is everything we do is um, for aerodynamics. So right. all this is actually functional, and it's and this carbon. is all carbon fiber. Yeah, this is for we're going to go to the track later, I think. So. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, Ralph's going to take this to the track yeah. and uh, do a couple laps. I'm going to drive it on the street. He's going to drive it on the track. What's really cool is Ralph drove this very car here all the way from where? Florida? Yeah, Key West. Key actually. West. <laughs> I wow. wanted to go as far south as possible. Wow. And as far west as possible. Back in the old days, the head of the company never would take a car and drive it that way. It's I cool. love road trips. and I'm a big believer you, you learn so much about the yeah, car. Yeah. You, know, you bond with the car. So you put, what, 3,000 miles on this in uh, a couple of days? Since, yeah, and I left from wow. Detroit, so a total of 5,100 miles. Very cool. And tell us about this one here. So this is, uh, I hate to use the word base, but this is the base car, the SRT. Okay. Uh, this is under 100 grand, so it starts at uh, 97 uh, right. and some change. And this is more for the guy who doesn't want all the fancy stuff. It doesn't right. have the adaptive suspension. Uh, it doesn't have, uh, it has two mode traction control versus four modes. It's a little simpler right. car. The interior is still wrapped, but it's vinyl instead of leather. Right. So gotcha. it keeps the, the cost down, it has cloth seats in it. So it's more for our traditional Viper customer right. that may not want the accoutrements you know, right. of the right. stuff. So Very it's, good. But Very it's a great good. value. It's actually the lightest and quickest. We actually give it a different hood yeah. so you can tell them apart. This oh, has that's a, right. Yeah, I noticed. This yeah, it has a six port hood versus a, the twin port hood. Yeah. So it's a little more flamboyant, a little more fun. Um, I probably like the twin port hood myself. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, it. Very nice. I think it's time to go for a ride. Boy, it revs much quicker than the old one used oh, yeah. to. Yeah, with the longer runners, it really likes RPMs. I mean, it's yeah. yeah. It's interesting, all the gauges are virtual, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. No more reaching back and tightening up that uh, tack cable. Oh. <laughs> You know, the nice thing about American supercars, and I say Viper and Chrysler because I, I love stuff that's built in America. Th these engines are pretty much bulletproof. This engine, big eight liter, two valve, aluminum. I know two valve people go, why doesn't have four valve? Well, you get more bottom end, more torque with yeah. two valve. Sometimes you don't need it. You don't need an eight yeah. liter engine like this. These are pretty much bulletproof motors. I've had mine 20 years and I've never done anything to it but change the oil and, and put gas in it. You know, it's kind of funny. Here in America, we see a Ferrari or a Lamborghini and we all go crazy. You take one of these to Europe and car guys go nuts because they've never, <laughs> they've never seen it. Pretty it's rare. just so American. You know, car guys all the time talk about uh, four cam and multi-valve and all that kind of stuff. Something nobody ever thinks about with these sort of engines with your camshaft in the block, you've got a lower center of gravity on your yeah. motor. You're not carrying all your weight up here in the heads. And I know it might seem small, but when you're racing at Le Mans and that kind of stuff, it's all center of gravity. It's all weight distribution. And uh, that's what wins racing. And this car has the biggest tire footprint of any car in production including the Bugatti Baron, isn't that correct? That's right. Yeah. Well, you know, nobody ever thinks of the cam in the block as low center of gravity. You just think of it as old tech. Yeah. And it's really not. You know, the nice thing is, they build these engines because they know guys are going to build up on them, and you use forged pistons because a lot of guys want to supercharge it. So they make the car, they make the engine actually much stronger than it needs to be for the application with the assumption that uh, sooner or later you're going to want seven or 800 horsepower. Well, it's amazing how nimble it is compared to mine. 
I mean, it's still a Viper, and I know physically it's the same size, but it does feel smaller. Uh, yeah, pretty amazing. Let's take it up on the freeway. Let's see how she cruises. Torque Monster! Okay, at 60 miles an hour, we're barely turning 1,800 RPM. So what kind of mileage do you get coming across country? Well, if you cruise under 70, easily 21, we average about 20 yeah. the whole trip, uh, including some traffic jams. But it's so hard when you dip into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It goes away pretty quickly, but. I enjoy this dashboard. I like having the gauge package. I mean, I like to know what my volts are. I like to know what my oil temperature is. Not that it makes any difference. I just like to know. <laughs> if you notice your transmission is running 20 or 30 degrees higher, yeah. you know, you've got a, a warning that hey there may be a problem and you can check it out and actually on the reconfigurable dash um, the driver has the option to put what he wants up in the top yeah those, I think those two windows are uh, basically up to you to put what information you believe is pertinent yeah that's very cool yeah. and what is the coefficient of drag on this car do you it's, know it's uh, 0.36 well, that's pretty good yeah it's not bad a lot of the body work creates negative lift so it's not as uh, slippery as it could be because we want downforce you know? yeah exactly yeah. you know that's another place people get all like, I think the Tesla has a uh, coefficient of drag of 0.24, mm -hmm. but its top speed is only 125 miles an hour. Yeah. So downforce is not an issue there. Yeah. Whereas this, a car capable of over 200 miles an hour, you need that uh, elephant sitting on the hood, as they say, <laughs> to uh, keep the front end down. And of course, brakes are incredible. That's just something you take for granted these days. What, what, tell me about these brakes. What are they? Uh, they're 14 inches all the way around Brembo's okay. Sport Piston. Uh, okay. these, these are track pack brakes, which has uh, uh, two, two parts, so right. it's a bit lighter. They, they ventilate pretty well. So you've got Brembo brakes all the way around, and, and, and which, of course, the brakes most of the supercars use, yeah. especially the European ones, except this you're not paying a quarter million dollars for basically the same <laughs> thing. As we said earlier, the Germans wanted to know why, what is burnout? Why do you do burnout? It's a waste of tire. It's a waste of the, the, the car's not moving. It's just burning tires. That's what we do here in America. If you're German, watch this. Let me show you how you do it. Nice. There we go. Beautiful. Ashton, see you next week, yeah. <laughs> oh, pizza. <laughs> Hey Jay, we're here at your backyard at Willow Springs, about to take the uh, Mystique, uh, nicknamed her Mystique, and take her out and see what she can do after uh, close to 5,000 miles on the road. So I can't wait to get on track with her. Take a GTS at Willow Springs. It's pretty exciting. We actually, I love this track. It's a nice open track, a lot of grip. Put the car in race mode, and then the suspension stiffens up dramatically. It also uh, changes the uh, algorithm on the stability control system, so it really pretty much lets you do what you want to do. The Viper's come a long way. It's really. Uh, of a GT car after driving across country, you put it in the soft suspension mode, you can imagine yourself drive, driving this car pretty much weeks. It's really, really comfortable now, but then on the track, it, it kind of finds its home. This is really what the car was designed for. Uh -huh. This car came from like a kid car mentality and is now, I think, truly a world class GT, but done the American way, you know. a lot so once you pass the limit the new car is a lot more catchable now so it's really the old car would spin whereas this one you still have a chance to to correct um, we've increased the steering angle the, the steering is much more predictable now so you can really feel what the car is trying to do and that's for, it really it's rewarding for uh, someone who can drive well and for a pro it's just nirvana I mean, most pro racers that we've auditioned for our LMS track uh, team we actually used a base car as a way to get them comfortable with the dynamics and we worked them up to the DCRX. I think we're going to go in now. Thank you, Jay, for the awesome uh, day. It was an absolute pleasure and uh, hang with you any day. <laughs> <laughs>